I've actually embedded a sim in another in another page as well. So hopefully you you see now that we've got in here a, a bunch of uh, tools in terms of communicating either the simple four basic messages. See, you could use that in a, in a nice classroom situation through middle school, through high school. Um, and you can also have a little bit more serious discussion about what the uh, policy proposals might be and their impacts using this more sophisticated emissions dynamic indicator that is here. All right. So remember, we're back to the, the, the how do you get the message out there. So one is to use embeddable sims. We've got the less detailed one of communicating four messages. We've got the more sophisticated one, which dem demonstrates the potential for sea roads. You can also run a mock climate negotiation. So many folks out there have run climate um, interactives, um, Copenhagen climate exercise, which uses a simulation like uh, the, the proposal one that I just showed you. Um, in large groups where people play different nations, different nation blocks, and they come together to try to reach an agreement. What's interesting about doing it that way rather than in the lecture mode that I just did is that people actually get to feel what it's like to be different groups in different parts of the world. I had a very interesting experience where someone running this, uh, it, running this simulation where we had one of the participants who was from a fairly rabid um, public advocacy group um, actually playing the role of the developed nations becoming a little bit more uh, conservative in their approaches and I've also had the experience where people who I think of as fairly outgoing are playing members of the developing B world, the impoverished ones and in these negotiations often that group is not even um, participating. They're, they're not even um, allowed into the conversations or they're kind of marginalized and they felt like a victim. So you get to find out what it's like to be in these different groups. So here's another way um, for those of you that are interested to, uh, to engage and to, and to learn in this process. Um, another way to get into this is to develop and to use the technology that we're showing here, systems thinking technology. And it could be developing very simple learning labs, models, sharing them with people. Um, it could also be developing your own um, set of indicators that you wish to follow. And again, communicating and, and using and activating the viral social networking networks to do so. So this just this morning, I developed this little climate dashboard that I'm embedding in a social networking website for uh, sustainable handover. I happen to be on the media and communications group and we're wanting to keep track of how people locally are doing. Well, as you can see, I've got global and national indicators here, but how people locally are doing on different activities. And you can very easily take an Excel data spreadsheet, which I did this morning. I did this in 15 minutes, I swear to you. 15 minutes I had a, a data spreadsheet, linked it into a Stella model using the import feature, and then created this little uh, dashboard and uploaded it. And this dashboard now, anytime new data is um, added to the Excel spreadsheet, you can walk through the same process in like two to three minutes to update the data on the dashboard. Now, why would you want a dashboard? Well, you can have a dashboard that shows how different groups or different um, policy initiatives are doing. And you can compare and see where there are trouble areas but more importantly, and this moves beyond how typically dashboards are done, if you do it using a systems thinking approach, you can then um, cause people to move into thinking about it into and, and and broader and more systemic ways of thinking about it. So for example, here's a, an indicator around emissions, which um, I uh, am grateful to Beth Sawin from uh, Sustainability Institute for suggesting this one. But this is looking at the genuine progress index relative to the unit of emissions for the United States. And the genuine progress index is a another indicator instead of the uh, is, instead of the gross domestic domestic product or GDP type indicator. It's an indicator that also includes into into it um, quality of life issues. And it turns out that um, up until around 1982 or so, um, we were seeing improvements in quality of life, genuine progress in things, simultaneous to emissions rising. Since then, our progress has actually gone down. Well, you know emissions have continued to go up. So what this is saying is that for each unit of emissions that we've been adding, we're not really getting anything out of it in terms of quality of life. 
Um, so that for anyone arguing that um, you know we're getting more out of uh, all of this energy that we're using, it may be that uh, you know uh, thinking a little bit differently, more systemically about it, more holistically, um, can uh, add add to the debate. So that's one way that a, a, an embedded dashboard like this can be helpful. But the other thing can be, as I showed before, is you can show people the systemic linkages, the systemic understanding associated with um, you know different parts of it by building and showing stock and flow maps, little simple simulations, you can get people to understand what's, what's happening in a deeper, deeper way. All right, so again, using a systems thinking dashboard for you, your community, nation, or planet, I think is, is an excellent thing to be able to do. And again, this ought to be able to um, use the Web 2.0 technologies, use social networking, and you can engage folks in issues that matter. All right. So I promised that I would show the future, what the future could look like, and I've got um, information here from a colleague of mine, Chris Wild, from the Systems Thinking Collaborative. And you know, it's very important, and sh uh, she's a strong advocate of this, as is John Sturman and some others, that often we present the information that you just went through. It's fairly bleak, looks almost hopeless, to provide a vision of what the future could look like, because without that vision, despair and an action can set in. So we want to avoid that. So the future can look like a variety of things. There are multiple futures out there. One such future could be more energy efficient homes and businesses, um, better technology sources of energy, um, working on eating locally, uh, growing locally, public transportation, and just redesigning the way we live for a better commuting, healthy commuting. So let's look a little bit more detail at these things. Again, the slides that I'm showing you here now are embedded in a, uh, a movie that are in the CO2 global um, dynamic indicator that I showed earlier, by the way. So when you get that, you can see these again. So we can access our higher selves through ingenuity, grit, and looking to the future. Let's, let's uh, not be ostriches here. So one of the things, the areas we can look at is areas around renewable energy. And you see um, certainly a lot of growth in solar and wind. Um, there's a lot of talk about smart grid, and if we can get these technologies in place, that's one area where we can see some uh, some major impact. These also have economic implications because they can ultimately reduce costs in the long run, and in developing them, there's job creation and all of that going with it. Other um, things that you can do is to eat locally um, in organic foods. It turns out that um, uh, you may not be aware of this, but food the average American eats travels approximately 1,200 miles or so to get there. It's a lot of energy and transportation costs. So eating locally is one thing you can do to uh, um, you know, really cut down terms, you know, the transportation um, emissions that are associated with food production anyway. Um, there's a lot of different vehicles and cars. There's, there's five electric cars you can buy right now. Some of them are almost cute, like they might be made by Apple or something there in the upper right. They look like uh, um, almost iPod-like things. Um, you know, you, there's all kinds of uh, vehicles that are out there that uh, you know, we could start getting into right now. Um, looking towards other types of transportation, low-carbon transportation options are out there. Um, we're talking about high-speed rail, but just getting regular rail up and going would be a huge improvement um, in terms of the amount of uh, fuel burned to move people or goods. And then finally, there's just a, an improvement of our health just by organizing our communities around biking and walking, um, you know, working more at home, telecommuting. All of these things can uh, you know, reduce transportation um, associated with commuting as well as improve health. Um, getting out and walking is a, is a good thing um, for a variety of reasons. Sustainable development, there's a lot happening there. There's uh, co-housing, there's uh, you know, using uh, surfaces on buildings to, uh, to create carbon sinks, um, sequestering, um, all kinds of urban designs that are out there. And uh, these are also offering lots of hope for the, for the future. So, um, you know, Chris, Chris has this slide that she includes in the very end about yes, we can. It really is about um, individuals um, looking at a global issue and tackling it um, individually and locally in a way to, uh, to make, a, make a difference. So um, 
you know, with that, that's a lot of material. I've presented um, several things that, again, I think you can use to, uh, to describe the issue.